I recently managed to pick up the Pikachu with grey felt hat card and this seems to be one of the most controversial cards out there. So I thought as a collector, I'm going to record a video talking about what I feel about this card and how I see things going in the future. Uh, now before I express my opinion, I just also want to thank everybody who has subscribed to this channel because I recently hit 500 subscribers. So huge shout out to all of you guys. I really appreciate your support and it's it's really amazing to see that there are at least 500 people in the world who, who enjoy my content. So let's get into the topic at hand, which is these cards. So I picked up two of these cards. Uh, one was a raw copy and one is a sealed copy. Now I'm a UX designer and artist by profession and Pokemon is my hobby. So when I found out that there is a Pikachu card that immortalizes the work and art of one of my favorite artists, I just had to get on it. Because for me personally, this card symbolizes the perfect mashup of two of the things that I love most, Pokemon and art. As a returning collector, I'm still learning what is the best strategy for my collection but I knew instantly that I needed two copies of this card. One sealed promo which I wanted to keep aside and one very good minty raw copy that I'm probably going to grade. Now another reason I really love this card is because Vincent Van Gogh famously started his painting career around the age of 27-28 and in a matter of a few years he is now celebrated as one of the greatest artists to have ever lived. So as somebody who's trying to build a YouTube channel and a YouTube career in their 30s, Vincent Van Gogh's story is extremely inspiring to me. It just tells me that it's never too late to start creating. It's never too late to create art. And in the end, there is absolutely no denying the collectability of this card because it just hits all the right points. There's a Pikachu which is globally recognized by everybody. It is related to the art world because we're talking about Vincent Van Gogh and we all know how art appreciates. And the final nail in the coffin is obviously the limited nature of this card, right? It was a limited print run available only in a certain area. And even though there are a massive number of copies, I think there's about 18,000 cards graded by PSA itself. I still don't believe it's that big of a number in say five to ten years time now everybody is talking about the reprint that's upcoming in february and i think that is only going to make you nervous if you are a scalper if you're a collector like me it really doesn't matter whether they print it now or they print it in the future because most likely i'm going to keep this card in my personal collection for life but here's where things get sticky because i ended up paying almost 300 dollars for both of these cards and when i was buying it it didn't seem crazy but um now that i think about it it's a bit high because I would say on average, and I've not calculated this properly, but just a ballpark figure, I think most chase cards which are popular nowadays go around that $100 mark. So I think $100 or maybe $75 to $100 seems like fair value for these cards. Paying $150 just seems like an unnecessary premium for a card which actually is pretty easily available. So I feel the problem is then happening because of scalpers. Now what is scalping? So scalping is a trading style that specializes in profiting off of small price changes and making a fast profit off reselling. And that's exactly what has happened with this card. So a lot of people who had early access to this card went and picked up multiple copies and are now reselling it in a singles market for a premium. And I was also a bit miffed at this fact and, you know, irritated with scalping and all of these practices that happen in the Pokemon world. But then I have been looking at this card for the last few days and then I realized one thing, like this card is about art, right? It's about Vincent Van Gogh. And isn't all of the art world just scalping? I mean, all of these famous artworks that are being sold at auction, none of the actual money from those auction goes to the artist. It's probably going to some collector family or some collection house that is reselling those paintings for their own profit. Vincent Van Gogh himself didn't mass produce his paintings. I mean, there are a limited number of Vincent Van Gogh paintings and everybody wants them. And I feel that's exactly what's happened with this card. So I thought rather than just creating a negative video where I'm just blaming scalpers for me having to pay an insane premium for this card, I thought I'll try to express my feelings and gain some empathy from the people who are actually doing these practices to at least try to get the market to a fair value. Because today I know that I might have the privilege i might have the money the access the communication lines to get this card imported into my country and in my hands but i also know there are a lot of young collectors and artists who might see this card and may never be able to hold it in their hands because of the way the market is set up this singles market is actually functioning like a mini stock market but without any of the regulations that a normal stock market has. Now, I'm not saying that there should be regulation, but having come back into the hobby after this huge gap, this entire experience of buying this card at such a premium was slightly jarring for me. It did something for me, you know, it pushed the wrong button. It, 
it 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 nod a little bit you know it a little, little thing in my soul you know i was like there's something not right about this so now i'm stuck thinking like should i slowly start converting myself into an investment guy and thinking of the value of this pikachu in the future and you know oh how much money will this graded card give me or should i hold on to that past innocence of what it meant to open pokemon cards i'm still very grateful that i was able to pick up these two copies and i'm really enjoying the way these cards look the way they feel the quality of it it's really really nice these are definitely good additions to my own personal collection and i personally am not going to overthink it you know fine it's 150 dollars tomorrow if the card gets reprinted it's 120 dollars psa prices will fall everything will fall whatever it doesn't matter i think this is going to be one of those cards that's going to be with me for the next 10 years anyway so it's fine but yeah circling back to the main point i just want to kind of appeal to the community i think we've lost a little bit of empathy and that innocence of what these cards actually meant to us especially the guys like us who were there in the 90s and have now grown up with it i guess it's more fun looking at pokemon as an investment now because that's the adult thing to do but we do need to have a general understanding of what is fair and what is right because in the end this is a hobby that's supposed to be accessible and enjoyable for everybody and this is all my personal opinion there's absolutely no obligation for you to believe or follow this at the same time but i just felt very deeply about this topic and i had to put this out there now i'm still learning how this market works and i'm no expert but if you are looking to buy a card i would suggest you wait at least till march because all of these rumors of a reprint in february and all of these things you like you won't know how it affects the market now if the prices go down everybody benefits if the prices go up you can anyways pick it up immediately before it actually starts to spike intensely right so i think march is like the perfect time for you to make that decision whether you want to pick up this card or no personally as somebody who admires the card just for the art for what the card symbolizes the fact that i'm going to keep this card in my personal collection for life it absolutely doesn't matter what happens to the price i have picked up the two cards that i wanted one sealed and one raw and so i'm done uh, i'm done with this rant as well uh, this is the end of the video please let me know in the comment section like is is what i'm saying making sense is it just me am i just being too idealistic are there different opinions out there i really am trying to reach out to the overall community and get everyone's view on this and see like where is this going because again i am very happy to be back in the hobby uh, i have been having a lot of fun i've been creating a lot of videos i recently made that spicy treasures ex challenge that was super super fun i'm a little bit iffy on paldian fates and i do believe the set after paldian fates is going to be insanely good like again if you're studying patterns you're going to see that you know how chilling rain was to evolving skies i feel the same way about how paldian fates is going to be for temporal forces i think paldian fates is going to walk so that temporal forces can run and if you guys are interested about my study of the overall trends and patterns and how i have been trying to take my research please make sure to let me know like i will definitely try and you know share out my ideas and thoughts because that's what maturing in the pokemon hobby is i guess you know you can't be a collector without being an investor nowadays and that's what i'm trying to do so thank you guys so much for watching make sure you leave some feedback for me in the comments because i keep trying to improve my videos and i'll catch you guys in the next one Till then happy hunting